Hi everyone! Welcome back! This is part 2 of the Warrior Cast Iceberg. So if you haven't watched part 1, go ahead and pause this video and watch it now. If you're still here, I'm assuming you watched the first one, but a quick summary for those who don't know what an iceberg is. It's a popular format where common information is up top, and as you go deeper into the iceberg, the lesser known and darker most of the information is. Since part 1 covered the first 3 tiers, this video will cover the rest of the iceberg. As always, there will be spoilers, so please, watch with caution. With all that aside, let's dive in. Starting off on the fourth tier is Hammerclaw. Hammerclaw is the original name for Tiger Claw, but right before the books were printed, someone commented that cats wouldn't know what a hammer was, so Vicky chose the name Tiger Claw instead. This was a joke statement made by Vicky Holmes on her Facebook page when a fan asked her what happened to Jake. Vicky jokes, stating that Jake had been killed by a meteor while sitting on his fence outside his home. Of course, this is not the case, but many fans still believe this to be true. This is the name of two River Clan apprentices who were named after two Blog Clan members by Kate Carey. The two apprentices were kits of Lakeheart and Lizardtail, but the two were seemingly replaced by four kits and haven't been mentioned back in the book since. It's unclear why these cats were removed by the editors. Kate Carey, one of the main authors for Warriors, wrote a holiday fanfiction and posted it on her Facebook account for the holidays. The story revolves around a celebration, The Longest Night, and is through Greystripe's point of view. The story hints at a relationship between Firestar and Greystripe, but is not canon. The editors for the books were not happy that she posted the fanfiction, and she got in trouble for doing so. I'll leave a link in the description for anyone who's interested in reading. In June of 2011, HarperCollins released the official Warriors app, which had everything you need to know to become the ultimate Warriors fan. The app had book lists, trivia, the Warriors timeline, as well as short stories and interactive maps. In theory, this was a great idea, but it was a flop. The information quickly became outdated, it wasn't a reliable source, and was pretty lackluster overall. There were hardly any updates and it seems like HarperCollins stopped putting resources into fixing it because the app was quickly abandoned. Although I won't lie, I had this app when I was younger and I absolutely loved it. This may come as a surprise to many of you, but Ferncloud used to be a hated cat within the community. She was hated because of her permanent status as a queen, and many people saw her as a way for errands to write in more background characters. As a result of these complaints, Vicky decided to write her death in The Last Hope. This was a theory that circled the Warriors fandom for a while, though I can't find the exact source behind it. There are two theories in one here, as it could be referring to Cinderpelt or Cinderheart. The theory goes that if Cinderpelt had not been hit by a car, she would likely have taken Bramblestar's place as the next leader. A similar theory features Cinderheart as the next leader of ThunderClan after Bramblestar, or even after Firestar, likely due to a comment from one of the errands saying she would make a good leader, and a teaser from Vicky Holmes stating that the next leader of ThunderClan would be a surprise. Millie, a character introduced in the Greystripe manga, was actually named after Working Partners editor James Noble's cat, Millie, who was actually named after the Millwall Football Club. So basically, Millie is named after the Millwall Football Club. The Clans Decide is a short story written as a result of a poll on the Warriors website where fans voted on a leader to have a special story written about them. The poll was a fun nod to the presidential elections happening within the United States at the time. Firestar ended up winning the election, to no one's surprise, and thus the short story was written involving Firestar as the leader chosen to help feed the clans during the hard times. The theory is that the short story is in fact canon, and that it takes place sometime between Long Shadows and The Fourth Apprentice. In a blog on the Warriors website, Vicky Holmes writes about starting the series, including the creation of the first few characters. At the time, she hadn't thought about the parents of certain characters or gave second thought about their lineage or genes as she had no idea how popular these books would become. That's why we have mistakes like Greystripe's parents happening within the books. Vicky states that she wishes that she had kept a better tree that would have worked well with the characters that she had created. This was the original Warrior Cats forum, which shut down in 2016. The forum was essentially a large-scale chat board that had different topics mostly surrounding the Warriors universe. 
This was the official place for Warriors Talk created by HarperCollins and was possibly the first website specifically for Warriors fans to talk. There's a lot more information involving the forum and its eventual shutdown, but we'll get back to that later in the video. Sue Suzanne is one of the most infamous fans in Warriors history. In 2016, on Vicky's Facebook, Sue Suzanne made a post stating that she was working with Vicky Holmes to give canon information about some cats within the book, mostly about missing cats. Vicky signed off on Susie's posts and often commented on how grateful she was for all her hard work. When fans questioned Susie's authority, Vicky confirmed that Susie was not an official editor or working with the Warriors team, but her word was still the word of God. Sue Suzanne continued to create elaborate backstories, deaths, and family trees for the Warriors characters, all still treated as canon, as they had Vicky's sign-off. Sue Suzanne also aided Vicky in writing Pine Star's Choice, which strengthened her credibility within the community. While dealing with a backlash from Spotted Leaf's heart, Vicky, out of the blue, posts on Facebook stating that Susie's work has just been a suggestion, and is in fact not canon. Sue Suzanne's Facebook page was deleted, and the question still remains as to who they were, why they were given so much power, or why they were suddenly outed from that position. Sparkpelt's warrior name was actually chosen to be Sparkfire, but when Kate Carey pitched the idea to HarperCollins, they rejected the idea, so Sparkpelt was chosen instead. There's even an easter egg within the books, in which Graystripe comments that Sparkpelt should have been named Sparkfire, as it would have fit her better. In Dawn of the Clans, the groups meet for a large battle at Four Trees, and subsequently use Four Trees as the burial place for their fallen clanmates. They chose to meet at Four Trees in their honor and use it as a place of peace instead of war. Cloverkit, or better known as Project Cloverkit, was a movement started after a young artist received hate for posting their green and white OC, named Cloverkit, on DeviantArt. Warriors fans came together and sent support to the artist by making fan art of Cloverkit. Unfortunately though, the artist started to receive hate as well and caused the original poster of Cloverkit to deactivate their account. In a few copies, Shadow Clan was mistakenly written as Shadow Clam, with an M. In the first edition of Bramble Star Storm, Greystripe was incorrectly listed as the father of Misty Star and Stonefur instead of Feathertail and Stormfur. This was fixed in later reprints of the book. In an Aaron Hunter chat, it was revealed that Sunrise's original title was Cruel Season, but HarperCollins changed the title as it was seen as too dark. Before the sixth arc was given its official title of A Vision of Shadows, the arc was originally called Starkland's Promise. There's no official documentation left of this, but it's unknown why the name was changed. An inquisitive fan wrote to Kate Carey on her blog regarding the genetics of a few cats and their pelt colors. Which, by the way, could be a whole other entry in itself, as most of the cat genetics aren't technically possible. But that's beside the point. Kate Carey responded that the cat in question's pelt color was... a mackerel tabby. When the fan contacted Kate and told her that mackerel wasn't a color, but rather the way the tabby's fur pattern was ordered, Kate responded saying that she thought mackerel tabby was a color, and that it was green. Yeah, honestly not her proudest moment. Cleave Pool was a Leaf Pool AU fanfiction written in 2011 by King Rory. This AU is about Leaf Pool's decision to turn into a bloodthirsty killer and use items such as syringes, nails, and a cleaver to kill various cats who live in ThunderClan as payment for the pain they've caused her. This story, along with the AMVs about her, gained popularity and Cleave Pool became a well-known name within the community. Back when the Warriors site revamp happened, they revealed a new feature in which people could input questions into the Moon Pool. The Moon Pool, however, was very picky and didn't accept a lot of questions containing swears or slurs, or anything with LGBTQ plus terms. The original online game is Lost Media. It's a game that was planned, teased, then disappeared without a trace. On the official Warriors forums, a new user appeared, bearing the title of the official spokesperson for the Warriors online game. The spokesperson posted a survey in order to find beta testers for this game, but no further details were given. Soon enough, play testers were chosen, but were given a strict rule of not posting anything about any aspects of the game on the forum, and to keep any information regarding the game a secret. Unfortunately though, not much else happened since then. The forum silently closed down all threads about the game and never mentioned it again. 
It's really unfortunate that they missed the opportunity to create an MMO about warriors, as this was a time when games like Animal Jam and Club Penguin were becoming increasingly popular and would have been a great opportunity for the Warriors franchise. Unfortunately, the game never came to be and will forever be considered lost. If this topic interests you, I highly suggest you check out Falcon Develops game on it. Wands and Worlds was a discussion board website that hosted Aaron Hunter chats where fans could ask questions to the authors about the books. This website is honestly the reason for about 90% of those Warrior Cat fact videos you've probably seen on YouTube in the trivia section on the wikia. Though they eventually lost popularity, it did give us some insight on the author's decisions in many of the books. Allegiances of the Clans was a rumored title for a field guide back in 2010, but was cancelled by HarperCollins and is so far the only known cancelled Warriors book to this date. The reason for the cancellation is due to the fact that there was not enough information to fill a book. Had this book been drafted a few years later, it probably would have ended up as an ebook. As we go deeper into the iceberg, many of these entries are hard to narrow down and get 100% accurate and this entry is a prime example. I couldn't find the exact meaning behind this entry, but it's likely just a rumored series of books that the Aaron Hunters almost wrote. Under the Aaron Hunter name, there's Seekers, a series about bears, Survivors, a series about dogs, Warriors, a series about cats, and their newest edition, Bravelands, which is a series about African safari animals. There was likely a series about horses in the planning, but didn't pan out. It makes sense though, as Vicki Holmes has an interest in horses and has been riding horses since she was two years old. Vicki has also written many books about horses before becoming a writer for Warriors. After Sunset, We Need to Talk is a play written by Victoria Holmes following the events of Sunset. The play was released before the Power of Three arc and was a sneak peek, or rather a series of events, that hinted at the events of Power of Three. Vicky wrote this on one of her US tours and had her fans act out the plays at the stops. Unfortunately, any recordings of the reenactments were lost. In Blue Star's Prophecy, Bluefur, Sweetpaw, and Rosepaw all share a mouse that went bad, and the three get food poisoning. Bluefur and Rosepaw eventually recover, but Sweetpaw's condition continuously gets worse. Eventually, it's decided that Sweetpaw will not recover and is named dead. However, the cats never check for a pulse, nor check for any breathing, so many fans theorize that Sweet Paw was actually in a coma-like state and suffocated after being buried alive. After the release of Crooked Star's Promise, a fan suggested that Yellow Fang be the next character to receive a Super Edition. Vicky, who had not decided on a Super Edition for 2012 yet, replied saying that she was still debating on the character, and sure enough, Yellow Fang's secret was 2012's Super Edition. This entry is another fan theory, as many people believe Ashfur to be the father of Ivy Pool and Dovewing. In the books, Ashfur and Whitewing were seen together in a few scenes in The Power of Three, sharing tongues and making jokes. When Whitewing's kids were born and they both had gray fur, many fans theorized that Ashfur was actually the real father of both Ivy Kit and Dove Kit. The theory is really surface level, but it's still a fun addition anyways. A fan posted a comment on Kate's blog asking her a question about what Squirrel Flight's kits look like, to which Kate responded that she didn't see a clear image of the characters, but rather a flavor. Another fan asked what character had the most chickeny flavor, to which Kate replied, Twig Branch. The Aarons had originally said that Maple Shade's story was too dark to be released, which led many fans to believe that Maple Shade was a cannibal. Now, of course, this wasn't true and was disproven after Maple Shade's novella was released. But if it was, I believe there might be a certain warrior that she'd be interested in. In one of the books, a group of Thunderclan apprentices were shown enjoying some honey and commenting on its sweet taste. Cats, however, cannot taste sweet things, and people complained. The scene ended up being reprinted in later editions of the books. While this iceberg entry only lists the darkest hour, arguably the later half of the Prophecies Begin arc is part of it as well. Tigerstar, the main villain of the first arc, is often described as the Hitler of the Warriors universe, due to his obsession with taking over the forest, killing of half-clan cats, annexation of Urga clan, and their war with the allied Thunder and Wind clan. Of course, these are all similarities to some of Hitler's actions, which I won't be going into for this video.
Vicky Holmes decided that she wanted to introduce a new religion in the Warriors universe, showing that even warriors can accept other cats' beliefs. She did this in hopes young readers would be introduced to religious tolerance and would be more accepting of others' beliefs. Mouse Whisker is by no means a main character, but for some reason he has a large fan base. Though not having any major roles in the books, he has become a popular character due to his alleged relationship with the River Clan cat and his time as a Dark Forest trainee. I thought at first this entry was about the fake theories and facts circulating about him and his relationship, but as I dug deeper, I found something interesting. And honestly, I don't even know how to describe what's happening here. On a Facebook post on Vicky's page, a group of fans just started commenting about Mouse Whisker. They're very reminiscent of those old Chuck Norris memes, if anything, but it's still strange. One-Eye is the first truly evil cat we meet in the Dawn of the Clans arc, and many fans theorize that One-Eye is the cat who might have founded the Dark Forest. Kate Carey agrees with this theory on her blog, however, there's been no official word on when the Dark Forest was started or who was the first cat in the Dark Forest. Don Hudson, the illustrator for the Tiger Star and Sasha manga, ran into some trouble from the editors for some of the pictures in the manga. During one of the scenes, he drew a truck which had some rust marks on it. The editors, however, thought they looked too much like bullet holes. So after speaking with the editors, Don Hudson decided it would be best just to edit the marks off the truck to avoid any further confusion. Alderheart's Regret, or rather, Alderheart's Mistake, is a super edition that was posted on Goodreads as a potential teaser for a new super edition. As the name suggests, the super edition focused on Alderheart. It's unknown if this was a potential super edition or a placeholder, but it's safe to say that most people were not too happy about the announcement. The listing was quietly taken down, and we've yet to receive any information about the super edition. Hoop.la was the host for the old Warrior Cat forums before it was shut down. I couldn't find a lot of information about this one, but one Reddit commenter explained that there was an inside joke on the old Warrior Cats forums that the forum was powered by a group of hamsters running on a wheel. The joke started after a moderator's comment after a forum crash that said one of the hamsters wasn't running fast enough on the wheel, so, you know, the website crashed. Forum users took a strange liking to this joke and it became a meme within the forum. The joke went as far to have hamster-related content promoted on the forums, including avatars and contests about naming the hamsters. This is probably my favorite entry in the iceberg, as before the release of The Last Hope, Vicky Holmes teased that the next leader for ThunderClan was going to be a surprising one, and someone very unexpected. Of course, this statement excited many fans and created speculation as to who would succeed the legendary Firestar. There were many rumors about what would prevent Rambleclaw from becoming the next leader with speculation about his death or an injury. Allegedly in one of the drafts, Vicky Holmes had originally written about Brambleclaw running away from the clans and Squirrel Fight becoming the next leader. For whatever reason, the editors asked her to change this ending to what it is now. While working on the Tiger Star and Sasha manga, illustrator Don Hudson posted a draft of one of the pages, which had been replaced with a drawing of Sasha walking to Mordor. This is a reference to J.R.R. Tolkien's work, The Lord of the Rings. I'm going to be 100% real with you guys, I have absolutely no idea what this means. I searched a lot and I'm guessing it's a reference to a meme on Twitter or maybe in the forums, but I can't find the original source. Normally I wouldn't have kept this entry in the iceberg. I'm actually interested in the meaning and hoping that somebody who's watching the video might know something about it. So if you have any idea what it means, please, please, please let me know in the comments. I want to know. I'm so curious. And I'll pin the comment if there is one that has an explanation. After seven years, the official Warrior Cats forum shut down on August 12th, 2016. An email was sent to announce the closing of the forums, and this was a quote from the email, as no other reason was given as to why the forum was shutting down. Many fans speculated that there was going to be a different forum popping up, or it had something to do with the website revamp, but to this day there's no official word as to what happened. The second arc, The New Prophecy, was originally titled The New Generation, which was a nod to Star Trek as Vicky Holmes is a huge fan. 
However, the arc is actually based off of Watership Down, as the cats are focused on finding a new home, much like in that book. Verde opera is a term used for Giuseppe Verde, a 19th century Italian composer who wrote over 26 operas, many of which have common elements with Warriors books. RiverClan on Reddit has created two comparisons of the Dawn of the Clans arc to Don Carlo and the New Prophecy arc to Il Travador. Both comparisons are really well thought out, but I especially like the Dawn of the Clans comparison to Don Carlo, which reads, In a time full of tension emerges a leader's son, who is kind but not very bright, and very unlike his father. He's overly caring for those in his life and hopelessly naive, which makes sense when one considers his lack of a mother and who he has as a father. Our hero's father is a stern, embittered man. Not so much a villain, but rather an antagonist. He's often depicted as blue-eyed and gray-haired, and he's constantly paranoid of everyone around him, and will become deeply regretful when he realizes the extent to which his plans have hurt and even killed others. Anyway, our hero has found who he thinks is the love of his life. The hero's father takes the girl as his own wife. Our hero is heartbroken, but luckily for him, he has his childhood best friend there for him, who is always faithful, but also scarily passionate at times, especially in his political beliefs and his disdain for our hero's father. Meanwhile, the hero's father is locked in a struggle for control against a half-blind man, even worse than he, who is more of a concept than he is a true character, and is never referred to by his actual name. As the hero finds out more and more about his father, any trace of a bond they might have had at all disappears, and soon the hero is actively supporting rebellions against his father. Unfortunately, however, the childhood best friend dies in the hero's arms while saving him. What exactly happens at the end of the story is rather unclear, but this is known. The hero and his former love interest part ways. The hero fights the lackeys of the half-blind man, and the father finds the heavens, including his own parent, have taken his son's side against him. Well guys, that's the end of the iceberg. Did you learn anything new? Did any topics surprise you? Did I get anything wrong? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider subscribing as I will be making more Warrior Cats content. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good one.